what are some other scam things people will say? Ponzi. Okay. So pyramid requires multiple levels. Hex doesn't have any levels. Literally none. There's no levels. Is there a referral program at Hex? No. Can you make money referring somebody? No. There's no levels. So, I mean, not even is there no levels, plural, there's not even a level. Like, you can't make money referring somebody. So there's not even one level, let alone two. So now let's talk about Ponzi. What's a Ponzi? Ponzi scheme is named after Charles Ponzi, who said, fraudulently lied, that if you gave him money, he could buy stamps cheap overseas and then be able to let people mail things from higher price countries and arbitrage the difference in, in shipping. And that was not the case. He can only do that to a very small degree and nowhere near the degree that the money that he was acquiring from the public would allow. And so in his case, uh, he invented this thing where you get money in and then you steal from the principal of people that you owe their money back to, the investors, you steal from their principal and you use it to pay new guys. And then the old guys keep getting robbed to pay the new guys and then because you're running a deficit and you don't actually have any income, you eventually run out of money as soon as the new greater fool stop appearing. So how does a Ponzi fail? One, it makes fraudulent claims as to what its profitable business activity is. Two, it makes promises it can't keep regarding paying people out from the profit, which doesn't really exist. And then that's it. You, you don't have the ability to continue committing the fraud because you never had the income that you said you did, that you said you were splitting up, right? You did, you, these Ponzi never said, hey, I'm stealing from the new guys to pay the old guys. He didn't even do that. It's, it's, it's based on fraudulent uh, promises. So is Hex a Ponzi? Well, who owes you something in Hex? Does a human owe you anything in Hex? Nope. Does a company owe you anything in Hex? Nope. Does, does anyone... Well, where, where does the rewards come from? You mint your own rewards. You do your own work. So if you, wrote, if you wrote yourself a piece of paper and it said, I will paint myself a picture of a pony next month, and you wrote that down, now you owe yourself a pony picture that you are going to create on your own. Month goes by. You can either write yourself a pony picture or not. You owe yourself, based off your own commitment on code you ran, it's up to you. There's no one else involved. Absolutely no one. There's no entrepreneurial or managerial effort whatsoever. You run the code or you don't run the code. That's it. Just like a Bitcoin miner, by the way. Who pays Bitcoin miners their rewards? A company? Nope. Uh, other people? Do other people pay Bitcoin miners their rewards? Nope. Bitcoin miners mint their own coins. They mint their own rewards. That's it. It's very easy. So it's impossible for Bitcoin mining to fail as Ponzi schemes have failed. And it is impossible for hex staking to fail as Ponzi schemes have failed. Because when you mint your own hex, you owed it to yourself. Nobody owes it to you. <laughs> now, what is the value of a hex? What if the value of hex goes down? Okay, you made less money. What if the value of hex goes up? Okay, you made more money if you choose to sell it. But that's up to you. The, the, the system doesn't owe you cash money. You just owe yourself hex that you mint yourself just like a Bitcoin miner mints Bitcoin themselves. There's no middlemen. There's no counterparty risk. There's just awesome, awesome code that you run and that's it. So hex cannot be a Ponzi scheme because no one owes you anything. You mint your own stuff. It cannot be a pyramid scheme because there are no levels. Now, can it be a bubble? Yes, it can be a bubble. It absolutely can. And on a short enough time frame, you will have thought that Hex was a bubble because it's dropped 70, 80 percent, five or six or seven times. So if you, if you bought the very top and sold the very bottom in that time frame, it looked like a bubble to you. But then it goes and makes new all-time highs. And then it drops 70%. And then it goes and makes new all-time highs. And then it drops 70%. And then it goes and makes new all-time highs. And so my experience with bubbles is that if you, if you have a product and it has product market fit and people see value in it, the humans can undervalue and overvalue that thing. So for instance, Amazon.com dropped 95% in price 
in the year 2000 or within a, a year of that. Did that mean that Amazon was a scam, a Ponzi, a pyramid, a bubble? It meant it was a bubble. And then it continued to go up forever and is now 50% of all the commerce in the United States on the internet. But it dropped 95%. So this concept of things dropping 95% in price, it is more of a human issue often than it is a product market fit issue. Now look, there's a lot of scams in crypto, and there's a lot of rug pulls, and I tweet about these things all the time, trying to warn people about these things. All the time. It happens several times a week, every week. Millions and millions of dollars lost, bad code, bad teams, bad everything, bad, you name it, right? So... I do the best I can to warn people from these dangerous things. I do the best I can to have people in control of their own money, in control of their own resources, in in control of their own futures. So it's hilarious to me that as a person that's making the world a better place and solving counterparty risk and solving delayed gratification and solving so many things, the person that's solving these things, I have to keep hearing these questions about Ponzi, Pyramid, and no one even smart enough to use the term bubble, which is the only thing that it could be, right? And on a small enough time scale, yeah, it, if something drops 70%, it could seem like a bubble to you, which I could go pull up the chart real quick. I'll go to Hex News real quick. Hex News. And let's go pull up uh, our long time frame chart. Here we go. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a little bit hard to see this here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I see ten drops over fifty percent, or around fifty percent or more. But the price is up six thousand eight hundred X. Well, where's my where's my bubble? Where's my Ponzi? Where's my pyramid? People keep thinking that this can go to zero when the the more likely thing looking at the chart is that it goes to a price that's so high that your brain can't understand it. When you when you look at the hex price chart, it is pointed at a hundred dollars. It, it's actually like in six years, it's pointed at a million dollars a coin, which is insane because if you multiply the supply times that price, it's higher than the gross domestic product of the planet. But when you understand that market cap's a vanity metric, so I, I think hex might be one of the. I think hex might be the first project in the world to show people how stupid market cap is as a concept. 